Hello there, senior high school students. Welcome to our new lesson. This video is for senior high school grade 11 general mathematics. In this episode, we will talk about function as model. This lesson will give the practical application of functions in real life scenario including the piecewise function. Do not forget to have your paper and pen with you for you to write your solutions to the problems later on. By the end of this episode, you are expected to represent real-life situations using functions including piecewise function. Are you now ready? Then, let's start! Function can be illustrated as a machine where there is input and output. The function machine is a way of thinking about three aspects that make up a function. The input, the rule, and the output. For you to have a better understanding about this function machine, let me give you an example. When you put an orange fruit into a juicer, the orange fruit is the input. Now, what is the rule? The rule is the process being done by the juicer. The rule describes how to convert the input into an output. After the process, you expect a product as output. Now, in this example, you expect an orange juice as the output and not a grape juice. Or, you will never expect to have two kinds of juices like, for example, an orange juice and grape juice. This simply means an input goes in, something happens to it inside the machine, an output comes out. If we know the machine's function rule or rules and the input, we can predict the output. If we know the rules and an output, we can determine the input. A function takes an input and produces an output. Function notation is the way a function is written. The most popular function notation is the letter F followed by an X within parentheses, which reads as F of X. I repeat, it reads as F of X and not F times X. In function notation f of x, f is the name of the function, x is the input variable, and f of x is the output. Although f is the most popular letter used when writing function notation, any other letter of the alphabet can also be used either in upper or lower case. The f of x notation is another way of representing the y value in a function. y equals f of x. Consider a linear function y equals 3x plus 1. To write this function in function notation, we simply replace the variable y with the phrase f of x to get f of x equals 3x plus 1. In this part, you will learn how to represent real-life situations using functions in simplest way. In representing real-life situations using functions, we must answer these questions and follow these steps. Number 1. What is asked? In this question, you have to determine what the problem requires you to do. Number 2. What is given? Identify the given data in the problem. Number three, what operation to be used? Here, you have to decide on the operation to be used as required in the problem. And number four, write a number sentence. So you are going to represent the problem using function notation. If possible, simplify the function.
Let us have some examples. Example number one. Here is the situation. Give a function C that can represent the cost of buying X burgers if a burger costs 40 pesos. Based on the steps listed from the previous slide, we now identify what is asked. This situation asks you to represent the cost of buying X burgers wherein each burger costs 40 pesos. Now, what is given? The given here is the 40 pesos which is the cost of each burger. And the third question is, what operation to be used? So here, you are going to decide what you will do to get the total cost of buying X burgers. So what do you think would be the operation? That is correct. The operation to be used is multiplication. And number four, we're going to write a number sentence. So you are going to represent the problem using function notation. So what would it be? Let's analyze the situation. In this problem, let x be the number of burgers. And since you are asked to give function c, we will use letter c for the function notation. So let c of x be the total cost. Since each burger costs 40 pesos, you must multiply 40 by the number of burger x. Therefore, c of x, which is the total cost, is equal to 40, which is the cost per burger, times x, which is the number of burger. Okay, so this real-life situation can be represented as c of x is equal to 40 x in this example x is an independent variable while c of x is a dependent variable that depends on the given value of x example number two here's the situation a certain ornamental plant shop in nabwa charges 500 pesos for a yearly membership the first ornamental plant is free with a membership and any plant after that costs 150 pesos including tax. How much money M does a shopper spend after buying pea plants and paying a yearly membership? Again, you must follow the steps in analyzing the situation. First, Determine what the problem requires you to do. So here is the question. How much money M does a shopper spend after buying pea plants and a yearly membership? In this step, you are asked to represent the total cost in buying pea plants and paying the yearly membership fee. Next, identify the given data in the problem. So what are given? 500 pesos amount of yearly membership and 150 pesos cost of each ornamental plant. Take note, the first ornamental plant is free along with a membership. Number 3, decide on the operation to be used as required by the problem. So what do you think will be the operation? Yes. The operations to be used are multiplication, addition, and subtraction. Number four, represent the problem using function. The total cost that the shopper will spend is given by the sum of the fixed annual membership fee and the cost of buying pea plants. Thus, total cost is equal to annual membership fee plus total cost of plants bought. Now, how are we going to find the total cost of plants bought? Let P be the number of plants bought. 
let us go back to the problem. The problem states that the first ornamental plant is free. Therefore, subtract 1 from the total pea plants that the shopper will get and will be multiplied to the cost of each plant. Thus, total cost of plants bought is equal to 150 times the quantity P minus 1. Let M of P be the function that will represent the total cost in terms of buying P plants, including the annual membership, wherein the first plant is free. Therefore, total cost function is given by the function notation M of P equals 500 plus 150 times the quantity P minus 1. In this problem, P is an independent variable while M of P is the dependent variable that depends on the given value of P. Now, a function can be in pieces. You can create functions that behave differently based on the input or x value. In many real-life problems, functions may be represented by a combination of equations. Such functions are called compound functions or piecewise function. A piecewise function is a function in which more than one formula is used to define the output. It is a function defined by a multiple subfunctions where each subfunction applies to a certain interval of the main function's domain. As mentioned earlier, there are four steps to follow in representing functions. But for piecewise function, we will add these three sub-steps that will fall under step 4. For you to understand these steps, let us apply this on the next examples. Example number 3. And here is the situation. A user is charged 300 pesos monthly for a particular mobile plan, inclusive of 100 free text messages. Messages in excess of 100 are charged 1 peso each. Represent the monthly bill for the mobile plan using the function T of M where M is the number of messages sent in a month. Okay, so what does this problem requires you to do or ask you to do? Yes, you are asked to represent the monthly cost for text messaging using the function T of M where M is the number of messages sent in a month. Next, what are the given data in the problem? Exactly! These are the monthly charge of the mobile plan that cost 300 pesos and a charge of 1 peso in excess of the 100 free text messages. The next thing to do is Very good! You have to decide the operation to be used as required by the problem. And in this problem, we will use multiplication, addition, and subtraction. And the fourth is you are going to represent the problem using piecewise function. Now, if we will analyze the given problem, we can say that it consists of multiple rules and conditions. Therefore, it is a piecewise function. And we will consider the three sub-steps here. Okay, so let's do it one by one. Consider this line as M or the number of messages sent in a month. This line shows the intervals for which different rules apply. First, the mobile plan costs 300 pesos for up to 100 messages. So from 1 to 100 messages, your monthly bill will be fixed on 300 pesos. Next, over 100 messages, 
cost 300 pesos plus 1 peso per excess in 100 messages. Meaning, if you exceed the 100 free messages, an additional 1 peso per text message will be added to the monthly bill. Then, after identifying the intervals, determine formulas that describe how to calculate an output from an input in each interval. So let us use this illustration to describe the formulas. Based from the given illustration, if M or messages is greater than 0 but less than or equal to 100, the bill is 300 pesos. So we can write that this way. 300 if M is greater than 0 but less than or equal to 100. But if M or messages reach more than 100, your bill would be 1 peso multiplied by the number of messages M in a month less 100 free text messages, then it will be added to 300 monthly bill. So we have 300 plus 1 multiplied by the quantity M minus 100 if M is greater than 100. Next, to write the function T of M, we need to use braces and if statements. And it should be written this way. Okay, that's it. Now, it's time to work on your own. I will give you enough time to do the task. You can play or pause this video whenever necessary. Are you ready? You may now start. At this point, you may now check if you got the correct answers. How many correct answers did you get? If you get all the correct answers, good job! But if not, it's fine. There's always a room for improvement. Way to go! If you're ready, there's an assessment on the next slide. For us to check your understanding of this lesson, let us have an assessment. This test will evaluate your knowledge and skills after watching this episode. Again, you can play or pause this video whenever necessary. Good luck! Again, this is Teacher Dubs. Thank you very much and see you again next time. Bye!